Hi Q season four episode twenty three. Oh no, <laughs> not now. At a moment like this. Uh, yeah, they do. Even the coach listens to him. Coach is rattled because he knows Kita's right. Interesting. I've just come to fully appreciate it. Yeah, I think we've established that they're kind of a double edged sword. I feel like that's just a great combination. It's almost like two sides of the same great coin. There's that strength and power from routine, stability, dedication, meticulousness. And then there's the adventure from the fun, the play, the chaos. People like the Mia twins bring people like Kita into these thrilling areas of discovery. People like Kita keep people like the Mia twins rooted to something so they don't just fly off the handle, give some structure, etc. Just from personal experience, I think great dynamic groups have the anchor and the wild card. Incidentally, I think that's something Karasuna has in spades. Maybe even better on aggregate than in Narazaki. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Daichi would be the anchor. Hinata would definitely be the exemplary wild card in that analogy. I'm trying to figure out why it is that I feel Karasuna has it better overall. Maybe it's about leadership, because I think Kido, as great as he is, doesn't seem too keen to take the spotlight or to take the, the center role. Whereas on Karasuna, it feels to me like it's just so clear, so obvious right off the bat that Daichi is the leader. He's the spiritual center. And then from there, the, the kids can kind of just go off and explore and do their thing. Episode 23, The Birth of the Serene King. They just make it look so easy every single time. And it's not like Suki's doing great, like, he's on it. Like in this day, she focus already. In intentional. Intentional? Damn it, no. Wow, they're already at 20. I might just be tired. Yeah. Boy, is it going to be both of your mistakes? Why was that such a touching interaction between the two of them, despite it being so, so rough? I want this for him so badly. Yes! What a journey it's been for Asahi. I love, I love, all the threads in the show are just so great. That was no fluke. That was, that was the result of like four seasons. This could backfire. Yeah, Kira kind of foreshadowed that. They're playing right on the edge. He was there to save them. He saw it. He saw it all. Always right. <laughs> yeah, one more of this. I want this momentum. That feels like that's just total faith. And that feels to me to be very Kita like. Process oriented, not results oriented. Trust who you are, trust what you do, trust that the results will follow. Come on, oh. Yes! So great from Daichi in that moment. Well earned. You gotta earn your points with, <laughs> with realizations. That works, that works. Thank you, finally. Yeah, yeah, this feels like a streak. At the perfect time, too. They might. <laughs> he just sees right through it. This at least feels better, and I think is Haikyuu at its best, when both teams are unencumbered and are just playing their best. I mean, it's anyone's game, right? It's just swinging back and forth. Yeah, we'll take that. Tanaka never misses. Have some faith, damn. <laughs> oh my god, that is such the... 
Oh no. Oh no. That was such a perfect Hinata moment. But in so many ways, like I said, Hinata, Hinata gets, just gets a contact high, but also Hinata forgets to do stuff because of his excitement. Pain. Oh, nope. We've been here before. We live here. Die here. Oh, look at all of Just like cheering for them. That's amazing. They've become fans. The respect. There's a hanging thread here. Tanaka asked Kagama for a favor. On the edge of a cliff. Yeah, yeah, this. Is it to rest? Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. No, fake out. Yeah, there we go. Oof. Whoa, that's set, though. Flashing back at a moment like this. That's one of the greatest benefits, I think, of Kakayama's transformation into the very direct Kakayama, I think. Because if he tells you he needs you in a game, if points are concerned, you can count on that being what he actually thinks is best. He might sugarcoat things for emotional reasons, but not when it comes to scoring, I don't think. That felt like confidence in Tanaka. It's a leap of faith. Oh man. Okay, I'm just giving, giving it to Tanaka. Yeah, and I think we've clearly established that Tanaka will not look down. He's going to look it right in the face. And he jumps off the cliff. It's just, it's extra satisfying watching Tanaka do that. That Kagayama Tanaka connection, perfect. And he lands safely on the other side. <laughs> Took a leap of faith. That was another point that was more than a point. Ah. I get the feeling. Get what you mean. Oh yeah. It, you have yourself to blame and thank you also. You gotta be really careful who you taunt. Taunting strong people, it just activates them. It just fires them up. Yesterday, actually, I was listening to someone talk about a pretty well-known phenomenon where there's a lot of evidence that telling people your goals, your big plans, and getting support, getting positive affirmation, actually is often detrimental to the likelihood of your success at that thing or the likelihood that you'll even begin because you're already getting positive feedback. And it seems like perhaps it's your body treating that as success already. So you've received the success without the underlying action. So hearing that idea, once again, I was thinking to myself, how do you so what do you do you know what do you do if, if someone comes to you and tells you about their grand plan i would feel really weird if a friend came to me and told me they had some big undertaking and i was like you're never gonna do it you know but at the same time there are some people for whom that's exactly the right thing to say this is not exactly that same situation for kagama but man did his brain start working because that's how he is he's someone who's wired for success and improvement he agonized over it for days you know he kind of went through that hell tunnel came out the other side with the help of his teammates of course <laughs> That reaction. Oikawa plays a role in this as well. Probably knows it. That was one of Kagama's earliest pep talks. Oh yeah, that. Oh yeah. I got so caught up on the Tanaka point that I forgot we're sudden death here. Whoa, that looked great. We still get a Kagama just won this with serving. That would be too good to be true. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're we're one away. Come on, Kagama, just win it. Just is it too much to ask for Kagama just to win this? It's too much to ask.
We gotta go through this every time, <laughs> every single time. Every single major game arc. It's always gotta be a nail biting sudden death match. Revisiting the genius thing. That makes sense, yeah. The Mavericks. Oh, this is so much, so much bigger than volleyball. Wow, that's a really great addition to this this long running genius thing. There's so much to unpack in this, but there there are two I guess main things that spring to mind. One of them is that there's no denying natural advantages. You know, there's no de denying natural ability or things like physical advantages in sports. That just is what it is, and because that's a true thing, there's something valuable about at least just recognizing that. But that's not really where energy can be applied most usefully, because that's one area of of least control. I think you can be selective about what you choose to focus on and where you put your energy. So there's something really special and important about the people who plug away at the things they can do, the things they can try, with the kind of resilience that we've seen many of the characters displaying in the show. Again and again, like my favorite Velociraptors throwing themselves against the fence until they hit something, you know, they find an edge, they find a gap, they find an insight. And following that, secondly, that is a talent. That's something that can be practiced and something that can be developed. I've thought about this a whole lot because I think in, in this spectrum, in this dichotomy that I brought up earlier between, you know, the kind of stability, anchor, and the wild card fun exploration, I definitely feel more aligned with the latter. And a lot of the really special things that came out of my life were unexpected and were a result of some amount of luck. Yet, I feel like there's a part of it that's intrinsic to me as well in my approach to how I do things and my restlessness, my desire for exploration, my love of all things new and novel and interesting, my relative lower fear of embarrassing myself, also my love of narrative, you know, loving to be able to tell stories and romanticizing things and seeing a million shiny objects scattered around that I want to pick up all at once, which also contains its weak points, obviously. Two strange examples from recent experience. Although Long Distance killed it, I ended up dating a Miss Universe candidate, which I never thought would happen. And two, while I haven't accepted it, I'm kind of dwelling on this right now, I have a job offer to be like the, the right-hand man in business meetings that require English to one of the richest people in Korea. And those both happened by pure chance. One was I walked into a bar. One is that I have a, a friend connection. But then it's like, well, how do those two things happen? Well, okay, first of all, I'm moving around a lot. I'm traveling. I'm like going to different places that are interesting to me. And more importantly, I'm following my curiosities and going places that are a little bit outside of my comfort zone, not even because it's a, a plan, it's because it's a compulsion. Like I just can't not do it. And also a feedback loop where I, I like the things that come out of my, my random sojourns, adventures. I develop stories around them. They're exciting to me. I romanticize things really easily. There's just something about the, the surrounding world, you know, the outside world that's sticky and not everything sticks, but if you're traveling long enough or fast enough, it's inevitable that things are going to stick in ways you never expected. A weird example from a long time ago, I've mentioned previously that I was a private investigator briefly. How did I get that job? One day randomly when I was out of work, the question popped into my head. I wonder if private investigator is a real job. And there it was on Craigslist. I'll mention a related phenomenon I've been noticing recently as well. For some reason, my short form video content algorithms are, are feeding me New York content, pros and cons of New York, etc. And I notice a lot of people respond to that question with the framework of, well, if not New York, where else in the country would I go? And for me, I'm looking at this screaming like there's a whole world. There's a whole world of options. It's not just the US difficulties of leaving one's home country aside, but that's an option, right? On the topic of travel, there's so many things people don't consider, don't know. I mean, I'm living in a country, I've been living here for two years with no visa, no issues whatsoever so far, knock on wood. How many people know that's possible? How many excuses do people make? How many obstacles do they imagine for themselves? And it's actually perfect and, and just so intuitive intuitively right to me that Kida is the one to say that precisely because that's not his lane. I mean, for me, if I meet Kida, I'm drawn. I'm sucked in because I'm like, they have something that is powerful that I don't understand or don't have. Can he? Can he? Can he get there? If he misses it, it's it's such bad news. He got it. Oh, he got it. But foot, foot, kick, foot, football, kick ball. Yeah, there we go. Clutch. <laughs> he scored on that? That's amazing. That's so great. He does that. He, he, that's him. He does that. Yeah, that's Hinata. Hinata just super leveled up. Part of it is them 
noticing what was always there. It's just more developed. The timing is really good because as of filming this, I just uh, posted the first episode of season four to YouTube. I remember a time where Hinata was just getting left behind and ignored and taunted, even if, you know, it was all with love. But speaking of focusing on the moment, not letting obstacles get in your way, he just put himself in the situation where he was able to develop. He like grabbed for himself what he needed. I can't remember my exact reaction to the first couple episodes of the season, but if I recall correctly, my take on his interloping the camp was a positive one. It's like, you know, who cares what people think? Put yourself in the position to get what you need, even if people don't understand. And this feels like the natural extension progression of that i don't know what it is i don't know what happened but the writers have really put their foot on the gas in these handful of episodes we end this episode with a new addition to the the genius discussion from kita no less so you know it's it's real it's reliable everything the man says is correct and if that wasn't enough we have yet another amazing tanaka moment from daichi spotlight kageyama really coming into his own is that the meaning of serene king that's a payoff that comes out of four seasons of setup and it's still going and a small but significant nod to asahi also four seasons in the making